about time for us to begin, ladies and gentlemen, so let me uh, call your attention to a couple of opportunities that we have. Uh, first of all, Ms. Gladys Lightfoot just sent me a message saying that the outreach center flooded this morning, and they need some help. If you can help in the morning moving around boxes, they, they need some help, help cleaning up there. So I don't know who can go up there, but if you can go up there in the morning, 7, seven 8 o'clock in the morning, they'd be appreciative needing some work. Uh, don't forget this coming Tuesday, uh, campus prayer journey. Uh, I was reminded this morning as it was pouring down rain, we began campus prayer journey 10 or 12 years ago. That's the biggest crowd we ever had when it rained, when it was raining. Maybe we needed to be raining Tuesday night. I don't know. But anyway, I want us to have a big crowd. Uh, I'd like for us to surround our school and staff and teachers and students with prayer. Uh, I think that we can become lax. I mean, it's not happened in Arkansas in several years. And when we, began, when we lay down our guard and quit protecting, then that's sometimes when it may happen in the community. So I hope that you'll be here and that we'll pray, about, pray, pray for our school on Tuesday at 6.30. We'll meet at the school auditorium. Uh, we'll have a prayer there. And then if you don't want to walk around the school, you bring your lawn chair, you can sit there or you can go home. Uh, but just meet us there. Uh, we'll have prayer guides that you could walk around part of the school or our, all of the school as we pray God's protection upon uh, our school year. Any other announcements? Brother Shane, good to see you back. You uh, uh, Lead us in worship, please, sir. Let's all stand and pray. We uh, prepare our hearts for worship this evening. God, we come before you uh, this evening just so thankful and humbled by all that it is that you do for us. God, we pray that uh, as we prepare ourselves to, to worship you, that you would help us uh, to just focus in on, on who you are and, and who we are in, in light of that. Uh, God, that we would just uh, focus in on your greatness and, and how very small we are and how very great it is uh, that you would let us be a part of your plan. Uh, God, we ask that you would speak to us and that you would uh, help us to, to learn and to, uh, to be obedient to you. Uh, we love you and we praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
Shane, would you be seated for just a moment? I just want to give a couple of reports. Uh, Bill Alexander, some of you, I guess everybody have heard, but in case you have not, he fell through the roof on Friday, not all the way through, and got four broken ribs and a broken sternum, but he is home recuperating. Doctor said that probably today would be his worst day of pain and talked to Miss Judy this afternoon and said that he was having quite a bit of pain. So continue to pray for Brother Bill. Uh, Gary Ray came home uh, Friday as well. So continue to pray for him. He's still in somewhat of pain. So pray for, pray for him as he recuperates from his colon surgery. Um, Continue to pray for Miss Linda, her mother, her family, uh, as they have the memorial service for her mother on Friday of this week, uh, visitation on Thursday of this week. So uh, with those in mind, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again today, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have become before you. And Father, you're, you're an amazing God. Uh, Lord, even 10,000 reasons just begins where we are. You're, you're worthy of worship and praise. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you for the opportunity to come to, come to you on, on behalf of Bill and Gary as they're going through some pain at this time. I pray that, Lord, you would grant them a sp speedy and complete and total recovery. And, Father, for the Swints and, and for the Poles as they go through a time of loss of a loved one, I pray that you'd minister to their needs as well. And, Father, I pray you'd glorify yourself in this service. Speak to our hearts. Uh, change us. Make us more like you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, y'all come forward. We'll consider that the prayer as well for the offering. Play, for the offering. Uh, you feel led of the Lord to give tonight. Uh, you give as God impresses upon your heart.
you can fly. You can fly. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. Sing it to your prayer.
together. Uh, Father, again, we thank you for uh, all that you've done for us. We thank you for the greatness of your name and the greatness of your presence. And our appropriate response to that greatness, to that name, uh, is our worship, our adoration, and our obedience. God, we pray that this evening the, that we would worship, that we would obey you, and that we would uh, listen in as, as you speak to us this evening. We love you and we praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Brother Shane and ladies, for leading us in our worship time tonight. And before I, before I really share with you the sermon that I believe that God has laid on my heart, I would like to make a few observations about the revival and then some uh, at words of admonition concerning follow-up. Uh, I, I want to first of all thank you, church, for allowing us to have the revival. I, I don't know about you. It's not the normal revival that we had. We did not have the professions of faith, the altars full that we all say that we'd like to have. But what I'm praying in my heart, in my life, that the revival would last more than past Wednesday. I know that God spoke to me tremendously. God challenged me every single service. Uh, God continues to challenge me. Uh, I'll, some of those in the sermon tonight, I, I'll, I'll share, those, share those thoughts with you, but it's just an awesome time, and I thank you for that. Uh, the books are still available. They're $10. Uh, if, if there, there are some D groups that are getting started. Uh, if you're interested in a D group, well, first of all, let me say, if you have led a D group and you are willing to lead again and your team is not full, would you stand just a moment? If all those ifs are right. If you've led a D group, look around, men with men, women with women. So we have several around. If, you're inter if you don't know what one is, ask one of these people. It's just, uh, go, you may be seated. Uh, it, uh, it's just the disciple. D is discipleship, how that we disciple one another. We, we take the passages of Scripture that we'll be studying in this book, for example. And each day that we, Larry has it outlined, each day that we study, we will hear as God speaks to us in that daily outline. We, we write down what we heard God say. And then when we write down what we hear God say, then we explain what it means to us. And then we apply 
how we're going to apply that to our lives and then respond, how we're going to respond to that. Uh, I think a tremendous way, best way to study the scripture that I've ever seen. And I encourage you and hope and pray that you'll get, you'll be involved in that. Even if you do not want to or not feel led to be in the D group, we'll be studying that. Uh, it's only five weeks, but some of you may take longer than that. We're going to take from now through the end of the year and then start back in Genesis in January. Uh, some weeks may take you. You may only do day one and day two. You judge in your group however you want to do it, whenever you want to do that, and we'll just see how God works in our life. And I know that God has worked in my life tremendously. I've been through it three times. Uh, been through Larry's teaching. Now I'm going to go through it again. And you say, well, Brother Bob, you're hard-headed. That, that you're right. But we all need to learn deep, deep, extremely deep truth in God's word concerning his, uh, our hearts and where God would have for us to be. Did you take your Bibles and turn with me tonight to the book of Proverbs? We started this a week before revival. And I just want to share with you one verse tonight and talk to you about one verse uh, don't have to answer out loud. Michelle's not here, so I don't have to worry about that. But don't have to answer out loud. Uh, but uh, any, any of you have any trouble remembering things? You do have trouble remembering. Am I, am I right? Maybe the things that you would like to forget, you remember. And the things that you would want to remember, you forget. Does that, does that work in your life sometimes? Uh, I, I, want to, I want you to look at this in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1. My son, do not forget my law. I, I, I don't know how that strikes you, but it rather seems odd. How can we forget the laws of God? Well, it's obviously in America we have forgotten God's laws. Amen? Our Constitution is built upon the Ten Commandments. Our Constitution is built upon the laws of God. And obviously there are some in our country, and sadder even to say some in our churches today, that would say that we're no longer obligated to the laws of God. God says, my son, forget not my law, but let your heart. What did Larry talk about all last week? But let your heart keep my commandments. I want to talk to you today, tonight, for a brief period of time about things that God does not want us to forget. God, God always wants to be the forefront of our minds, the, the thought of our minds every single day. There's some things that God wants to remind us of regularly, and he does not want us to forget a number of things. Number one do not forget the person of the Lord Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about necessarily in the way that we think, but in the way that we live. Oftentimes we forget who we are and to whom we belong. Amen? And we really don't do the things that God has called us to do. In, in, the, in the book of Deuteronomy, God was about to take the children of Israel into the promised land. God, God had reminded them that if you obey me, I will bless you. If you disobey me, I will curse you. And then he makes this statement. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 11. Beware, lest beware that you do not forget the Lord God by not keeping his commandments. That's what I'm talking about. Forgetting the Lord by not keeping the commandments that he has given us, by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statues for which I've commanded you this day. Beware. Pay closer heed. Take advantage of it. Do not forget the person of the Lord Jesus by obeying his commands. We, we may not forget it up here, but sometimes we forget it down here. You know what I'm talking about? We allow the flesh to take over rather than the spirit to rule and reign in our life and we begin to say and do things that a born-again child of God should not do. So he tells us, first of all, I, I believe, and at least in my outline tonight that I want you to see is do not forget the person of the Lord Jesus. Do not forget who God is and what God is wanting to do for you, do in your life. Secondly, 
Now, I, I want to I clarify what I'm going to say because this morning I thought the Renewal Ranch guys did a great job, give a great testimony, and they, a couple of them at least said, I'm not who I used to be, right? I, 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 I'm identified by who I am by who I am today, but God God does not want us to forget our past failures. God wants us to remember that these are the things that brought us down. Let me let me illustrate. Let's say that your greatest temptation is alcohol, and let's say the greatest temptation you used to run around with a bunch of guys or gals and and you, the the when, when you was watching a football game you would be at your home and you'd watch football game and all the way all around the football game you'd have chicken wings and beer it would probably not be a good idea for you to go on Sunday afternoon to wild wild wings is buffalo wild wings with all of the football games that are being played and all the liquor that will be sold because you, you because when the temptation is there there's more of a temptation to for you to come to that he, he said he says in Deuteronomy chapter in chapter 9 and verse 7 remember do not forget how you provoked the Lord God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that you departed from the land of Egypt until you came to this place you have been rebellious against the Lord oft times in life when God delivers us from something, we sometimes want to take credit ourselves. Can I get a witness? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I've, I've shared with you before, years ago when I was saved, the very first thing, I can't explain this. God's not done this for everybody, but I'm telling you how I prayed. I received Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. I had my hand down in my little parker. I had, I had them on a pack of cigarettes. I, I pulled them up. I twisted them up. I threw them away. And, and I was, it, it, God delivered me. I, I did not have a desire, not one desire for a cigarette. Until one of my best, my best friend was saying, you know, Brother Bob, Brother Charlie, our pastor said, I, I don't understand. Said, I just, I just can't give up smoking. And I said, Bobby, why don't you be like me? It was easy for me. And I tell you what, when I made that statement, I began to crave because I took credit for something that God had done. I, 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 may, I may not have forgotten right here, but I, I forgot in practicality in my life. We, we, we provoke the Lord to anger when you and I begin to take credit for something that he has done. So he does not want us to forget the person of the Lord Jesus. He does not want us to forget the provocation, the past failures that we had. Thirdly, he does not want us to forget to pray. Now, I have to say, God, God really dealt with my heart last week in a, in a tremendous way. And Larry, Larry, Brother Larry did not say a whole lot about this. But you know how God's Spirit works in you when someone's speaking and they may be talking about something else, but God's Spirit still, still speaks to your heart? God, God reminded me of a, of a passage of Scripture in 1 Samuel where David said, God forbid that I should sin against Israel in ceasing to pray for them. I've been your pastor for a little over 24 years from now, a little over 24 years now. And as I look back at my life, as I look back at my ministry, I would say that my, in my opinion, my greatest failure has been in not being consistent in praying for the congregation of First Baptist Church of BB. I ask you to forgive me for that. I've asked God to forgive me that for that. And I, I've made a fresh and a new commitment that, 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 that I will do my best, that, that as often as I can, as often as, as, as I can, that I will pray for the congregation of First Baptist Chief BB every single day. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. In the last seven days, four of the seven days, I prayed to the entire role of First Baptist Church of BB. I'm just using that, I'm just using that as, an, as an illustration or example. It takes a bit of time. It, it, takes, it takes some time to, to go through, and, and, and sometimes God will, will lay a particular person or a particular need on that life. And, 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 and I believe that if you and I are going to be the congregation that God would have for us to be, then we need to be reminded to pray. I, I, I've always been one of those spiritual people. You don't have to have a prayer list. Just pray about what the Holy Spirit brings to your mind. 
What we find out, for those of us who are like that, oftentimes we forget it. And what I have done is, is, is I, I've taken my, my, my iPhone and I have, I have our, 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 our directory on it and I can go to our directory and I can get the names of every one of you on our, on our directory and I can just pray through that and ask God's blessing and God's guidance. Could you imagine what would happen in First Baptist Church of BV? Listen, listen to this. If you would just take that sheet of paper, your deacon family ministry, your H's and G's, the, 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 the part of members, could you imagine what would happen in our congregation if every person, every active person in our church was praying for our church every single day? I'm telling you what, smaller crowd tonight, but I prom this I promise, if you and I were fervent in our prayer life, if you and I were praying for the church members that are inactive, if you and I were praying for our family members that are inactive, if you and I were, for, were, 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 were not forgetting about praying and you and I were committed to pray, you and I were committed to the Scripture that we are to pray without ceasing, I believe that even our Sunday night crowds would be filled. Now, that's not the purpose. That's not the only purpose of us praying for them. We need to be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ because as one of my friends said in college, they need the prayers and we need the practice. Amen? So, so God is saying that, that we need not forget prayer, that you, you and I need to be reminded, and maybe we need our, our iPhones. Maybe we need our smartphones. Maybe we need a notebook that, that we would write it down because I promise you now that, that, that if I don't write it down, I'm probably going to forget it. Do you hear me? If you have a prayer request for me, and you say, Brother Bob, I want you to pray for, pray for something, you might need to say, no, Brother Bob, you're going to forget it. You said you're going to forget it, so write it down. Or write it down and give it to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, God is saying to us that, that, that he does not want us to forget prayer. He wants us to, to be constant in prayer. And, and what I have found this past week, that the more I'm reminded of prayer, the more I want to pray. The more this past week that I was reminded of my heart, the more I wanted to make sure that my heart was clean and pure and right when I come to worship. The more that I was learning about my heart and where I am and where God wants me to be and how, how that God wants me to be free in Christ and how that, how, how that life is it's not about ministry. Life is not about things, but life is about Jesus. Surrendering our lives completely and totally to him. We, we need to be reminded that we need not forget to pray. Sounds, re sounds rather trivial. But I'm telling you what, the church will never be what God wants us to be and what, until we're the prayer warriors that God wants us to be. Number four, God does not want us to forget the punishments that he has given us. You know, the Scripture says over in the book of Hebrews that those whom the Lord loves, he punishes, Right? Uh, parents that love their kids punish their kids. Amen? Uh, we, we, we find ourselves in a generation that this generation wants to be friends with their kids rather than parents to their kids. And when, they're, when they grow up, the, the, the kids no longer respect their parents. And, and, and God wants us to remember the, the, the punishments we had. I, I can sit back and think. I called my baby sister today, and today would have been Mama's 92nd birthday. And today I thought about a lot of the spankings that mama gave me. Not only the good times, not only the happy times that we've had together, not, not only her little sayings that only me and our families would know. Uh, we'd have Christmas and mama would say, get the Camry. Uh, Y'all, the camera. She'd say, get the Camry and take pictures. Uh, the, the, the little things that mama would say. And, and I would remember the punishments and, and the punishments for, were for a purpose. And the punishments that God does for us is, is not that God saying, I'm bigger than you and I can whip you, but God is conforming us into his image. Forget not the punishments. Fifthly, forget not the praise. In the 103rd Psalm, the second verse the psalmist reminds us to forget not all his benefits. We used to sing often at Central Baptist Church in Dice, growing up as a, as a teenager, a new believer, count your many blessings, name them one by one, 
and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Do, 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 you, do you daily count your troubles? I mean, you know, this is a bad day. My wrist is hurting. My legs hurt. My eyes are hurting. Um, all of these bad things happening in, uh, happen in my life. It's raining. It's whatever it is. These are bad things happening in my life. You know, God's still on his throne. I got up this morning all day long yesterday it rained. Got up this morning, it was rain, pouring down rain. And I began to pray and I said, Lord, harvest day is not supposed to be like this. I mean, it's harvest day. This is supposed to be sunshine. You, you harvest in the sunshine. Do you not understand that, God? I mean, th this is harvest day. I, we're going to harvest in this raining. And I, I was doing a bit of time of complaining to God. Have you ever done that? It's, it's not wise to do that. But you, you know what God reminded me? In eternity past, there's never been a time that God did not know September the 23rd, 2018, it'd be raining in B.B. Arkansas. God knows it all. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know why, but God's on his throne. And, 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 and rather than complaining to God, I'm just going to praise God for what he's done. God delivered me tremendously last week. I tell you, he did. As pastors, and I've talked to many, many pastors during revival, oftentimes we look out on the crowd and rather than rejoicing on what's going on and rejoicing what's happening, we're complaining because, well, so and 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 so is not here. Last week, I asked God, God, help me to look, not look around, not be concerned about who is here and who's not here, but God, help me to be zeroed in on my life. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. And you know what I found? That every single service, every time I came, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. So rather than pouting, how about praising? And if we think, if we, if we meditate, if we consider we can count our many blessings. We can name them one by one. And I promise you, it will surprise us what the Lord has done. The psalmist, the psalmist reminds us the, the benefits of God, the, benevolence, the benevolent acts of God. You and I need to be, need to be thankful for God. He, he said, I, I, want, I want to remind you to praise, even in the midst of the storm. You see, even the lost crowd can praise God, or at least try to praise God when things are going well. But it's when we're down in the midst of the storm, down when things are not going our way, down when things are just not the way we expected or wanted them to be, when we begin to praise God, I found that praise praises the blues away. So God don't want us to forget to praise. That's the reason we have praise service on Sunday morning, Sunday night. That's the reason we, 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 we remind ourselves in Christian radio to sing songs of praise to God. Reminds us of the good things that God has done in and through our lives that we just want to praise God, not only for what he's done, but because of who he is. You see, he's a good, good father, Amen. So he don't want us to forget to praise him. And sometimes our minds, our hearts, has to be jogged by troublesome times to remind us to give praise and honor and glory to Christ. Number six, forget not his commandments. You seen there in our text, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 10, forget not my law, but let, my, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Keep the commandments from the heart. One of the gentlemen said this morning, I believe it was the last gentleman that spoke in the testimony, not the guy that gave the, uh, gave the report of how Renewal Ranch is coming, how that he always tried externally. And he tried to work it externally in, to the internal. But when he began to see that, that this Christian walk, this Christian life began on the inside, and it come to the outside. I'm reminded regularly of, of how many times I've heard Bill Alexander pray, God, we're here today not because we have to be, but because we want to be. I, I, I get to keep the commands of God today and tomorrow, not because I have to, but because I get to. Even those commands that we break 
in ignorance. When, when, we, when we find out what, what we've done is wrong, we, we need to confess them and, and get them right with God. You, you'd have to confess that the Jews, according to Acts chapter 2, the Jews crucified Jesus in ignorance. Nevertheless, God says to them, nevertheless, you are to repent because Jesus was the Messiah and is the Messiah. So we're not to forget to practice what we preach. It's not just what we believe it's not just what we say, it's what we do. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. You know what I'm saying? That's why I believe what the world wants to see. They, they, they want to see that peace in the midst of the storm. They, they want to see that peace and joy that's in our life. They want to see how we react in times of difficulty. And then lastly, not only does God want us to not forget the person of the Lord and the provocations you might say of the Lord, the prayers that we need to pray, the punishment, the praise, the practice, but we need, we need not to forget that God desires that we would please him. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 16, but to do good and to communicate, fear not. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith is well-pleasing to God. God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is just to step out on faith. My responsibility is just to believe you. And this is where it begins. We saw it all last week. This is where it begins. We begin pleasing God right here. What's on the inside? By allowing God to take his word that we read about. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 1, that we read about his commands, and we now get to see, oh, God, I'm sorry that I, uh, that I did that. I did not understand. I did not know it was wrong, but God, now, God, that I know that it's wrong, God, please forgive me, and God, God give, me the, give me the ability, give me the strength to, to do what's pleasing to you, so that one day, listen to this, that one day we could hear the words of our Lord Jesus, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Now, I don't want to burst any of your bubbles. I'm surely not wanting to judge any of you, but I don't believe that every believer that dies and goes to heaven is going to hear the words of the Lord Jesus, well done. Because some, according to, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, are going to be saved such as by fire. In fact, you can smell the fires of hell on their garments. That's what I'm, the analogy that I would use. But I believe that those that will hear the words of the Lord Jesus, well done, thou good and faithful servant, are those that begin in the heart. Those that were willing for a while to, to begin to meditate and begin to look at your heart. To, to begin to guard the heart with all diligence for, because we realize that, that we're guarding the heart with all diligence for out of it, out of the heart, are the issues of life. I was deer hunting years ago, uh, no longer deer hunt, but I was deer hunting years ago and with a, with a gentleman that I had a lot of admiration for and a lot of respect for, I thought to be a fine Christian fellow. We was walking through the woods and carrying a deer stand and went through some briars, and the way I pulled it, the way I pulled the deer stand, it pulled the briars over his hands and scratched his hand, and he said a curse word. And he said, oh, excuse me, preacher. Well, you don't have to apologize to me, because I'm not your judge. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that you would. You don't have to apologize to me. Uh, I, I, and, and he said, I didn't mean it. Are you kidding I mean, what's right here is going to come out here. What, what, what he's not doing, he's not guarding his heart. Now, I could do it. I could say the same thing if I'm not guarding my heart. So God wants me to guard my heart. And when I, when I guard my heart, when, when, I, when I make sure that my heart is pure and right, then I'm going, keep, I'm going to keep the commands of God. So don't forget. Remember to whom you belong. Remember
Help us, Lord, to remember the things that you would have for us to remember. And forget it. help us to forget the things of the world. Help us to cast our eyes solely and completely upon the Lordship of Jesus. For it's in his sweet name we pray. Amen. Now, some of you might need to respond. In the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me A sinner condemned unclean How marvelous how wonderful and I saw.